Hi, and welcome to our Stephen Brown inspired Muku art lesson. We're going to start our drawing based on Stephen Brown's Muku art by using a pencil and drawing a light outline of our Highland cow sheep. So we're going to start in the middle and we're going to draw the nose of the cow. So it's like a potato. Okay. And then underneath that, we're going to just do, as if it's like a smile. And this is the bottom part of the cow's face. Now there'll be two nostrils in there. Okay. And then we're going to add the face on. Now, we just start at the top of that smile. And we kind of go up. Not too far up. Up that side and then carry it on up that side and then we're going to bring it round and we're going to make it like a wee bit of a love heart in the middle. It doesn't need to be that precise. Now we're going to add on the horns and they can go right out to the side of the page. I'm going to add on the other side. And now we're going to add the sticky out ears. Now we're going to add the two eyes. So they look a bit like the nostrils, don't they? But we know the eyes because of where we put them on the face. And then we're going to add a body. But remember Maggie Beveridge's square cows that we did last week? We're not going to do much detail. So we're just going to put the shoulders like a line across there and then a line straight down here and you'll see where we're going to use that later on. Okay, so that is your pencil drawing and it should look something like that. Quite straightforward. Okay. Now we're going to use a black felt tip and we are going to go over some of the details but not all of them. So we're going to go over our pencil line for the horns. And for the nose area and the mouth. And the eyes. And that's all. Because the rest, we are going to use Stephen Brown's way of using his coloured and lovely wavy lines to fill in the rest of our sheep. Now we're going to colour in the mouth area. And I have chosen a kind of light orangey colour. And here is another one, it's a kind of pinky colour, so a neutrally one, or you could do a kind of light brown if you fancied. Remember, these are really bright and colourful cows, so I think I'm going to go with the orange. And you just colour in this whole area. Now it's time to do the colouring in bit. We're going to do it in the style of Stephen Brown's McCue art. So I have chosen, I've got six different colours here and most of my pens are really thick because that makes it slightly easier to do. What we're going to do is we're going to take a colour at a time and we're going to add some of the strands of messy hair that the Highland cows have. We're going to start from the top of our head shape and do a wavy line down to about the area of the mouth and the nose, but we're going to avoid the eyes. Now sometimes Stephen Brown doesn't do this in his art, but I always think it makes them look quite cute if we just avoid the eyes. So here we go. Remember it's got to be a wavy line. Wavy, wavy. Wavy, wavy. Wavy, wavy. Now I'm only doing the head area just now. Then you choose a different colour to go with my brown now and this can make it really quite tricky you're going to try not to go over 
the line that you've already got, you've got to fit it in between and as close as possible. So I'm starting from the top of the head shape and I'm kind of following the wavy line down. It's a really tricky technique, but oh golly, it looks great. Just try not to have your lines going too um, straight. We're always trying to be as wavy as we can. Okay, next colour. Oh, I think I'm going for a blue. Can you just carry on this way? That was quite tight. Now, they don't all have to follow the same shape. And at the bottom, they can cross over a wee bit. But try not to make them cross over too much at the top. I do know, however, that you're all fabulous artists and you will know what looks right for your cow. <laughs> you can see starting to get colourful personality now. Start at the top. The more colours you get, the more you're having to cross over as you go down. But do you see how I'm always starting from a fresh bit at the top? And this is my thinner one, and I really like this red because it just stands out. There we go. Woo! <laughs> that was a bit squinty. And that's me finished my head area, my face area. Now I'm going to do exactly the same thing, but I'm going to do it on his ears. So I'm going to start with the blue this time. And we're going to make them slightly shorter so that we're not actually going over the outline of the ears. We're just starting from the top. But we also want to see that it's different from the face. So if I just start from the top of my ear and you see how I make it a shorter line? Like that. It still gives us the overall shape and size of the ear. And I just take all my different pens and go through them one at a time in exactly the same way. Now it doesn't need to be a pattern, like the green doesn't need to always go next to the blue. You can have other ones in between. Whatever you think is going to look the best. Remember, regardless of what art you're creating, it's what you think is going to look best on your own piece of art. Remember how many times we've done things in class and I've shown you one you think it's good and then as soon as you see your friends work, oh, it's so much better. That's what I'm hoping for today. Wiggly, 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 wiggly. Do you know, boys and girls, this is lots of fun. Okay, and that's me finished his ears. So now it's time to do exactly the same colouring strands technique on his body. Now don't be tempted to start rushing here. If you've had enough for just now, put it away. You can always come back to it tomorrow. But you want to take your time to make sure you don't ruin it at the last bit. And this is actually quite tricky. Sometimes when you're going to do kind of lines going off a page, it's best to have a piece of paper underneath so that you don't mark a table, or in my case, my tablecloth. So I've got an extra wee bit of paper underneath here. And I basically do the same thing. What you've got to be really careful about here is though, you're going to have to start not from a straight line like we had for the ears, or that kind of slightly curved one for the head. You're going to have to start in this kind of shape, all the way around the mouth area, and that can be tricky. So think carefully about what you're doing when you're doing it. Right, so this time I know I'm starting up at that top corner and wiggling down. And now I'm going to start from just about the mouth and wiggle down. Remember, it's wiggly, wiggly. Wiggly, wiggly. Right, now this is tricky. I'm looking for the shape of the face. And now I'm on to the back. Straight forward once we get to the back. Wiggly. Oh, I'm so glad I had that piece of paper. That's me going off. This is my last colour. I'm going to just find some spaces to put some thin, wiggly lines of red in. It's a lovely bright colour. Now, you don't need to use the same colours as me. This is just because these were the ones that I had in my house. Okay. 
There we go. Yes, I'm quite happy with that. Now, quite often in Stephen Brown's McCoo's, he adds little accessories to make them look individual. For example, he might give them a hat, or they might be holding a flower in their mouth, or they would have a bow, or a party hat even. So you can, if you wish, draw some accessories on another piece of paper, cut them out, and put them onto your muku. So I think I'm going to try a few here. So I've drawn a few things that I'm going to add to my muku. And I'm just finishing off my crown here. A royal muku. But you could have all sorts of things, as I said. I was thinking maybe even a, a headband with bee boppers coming out of the top. That might be quite nice. So now I've finished my accessories for Miku and I'm going to very carefully cut them out. So now I have finished carefully cutting out my accessories and it's the fun bit. I get to put them on and see how my Miku looks. So, what do you think about the green bowler hat? Ah, that's quite nice. Or maybe a blue wig. There's a bow now. Maybe that side? Or perhaps it would suit her better over that side. And if I added a flower, let me see, just there. Oh, there you are. Perfect. But I'm not so sure. Maybe, boys and girls, maybe a squinty crown on the side of the head would work. Now the great thing about you having lots of different accessories is you can play about with them to find out what suits and what combination suits your Miku best. And once you're happy with it, you could glue them onto your picture or you can just take a photograph of them. And actually, you could take a photograph of them in many different ways and that means you've got lots of pieces of art. I cannot wait to see what you come up with. Remember to post them on our Zone Tasks and Class Questions channel. Bye!